Okay, just leave it. Welcome to the Humor Arts Museum's new show, which is called Circus Scenes. It's called Art of the Ring. It was curated by Karen Gersh, who is right here. Hello, Karen Gersh. And the Humor Arts Museum exists for the purpose of showcasing uplifting humorous art in all media. And we've shown sculpture, we've shown photography, we've shown painting. In the future, we'll also show performance art and film and all kinds of other media. And the reason the Humor Arts Museum exists is that in these times, humor is so healing and restorative and connective that we need a place where humorous and positive and uplifting art can, can come together and be seen. Uh, it's very easy to find sarcastic art. It's very, very well curated. And, uh, and yet kind-hearted, uplifting art is not as well curated. It doesn't have the same kind of audience and community, even though our hearts in some ways need it the most. So that's why the Humor Arts Museum exists. And Karen Gersh has been our curator, uh, our main curator throughout this year so far. And that's been a joy. So today we have two of our artists on this call. One is Karen Gersh herself, and the other is Mia Wolf. And I am going that's to- That's so Josiah Dearborn. Three. Oh, three. Oh, good. Thank you. And so I'm go we're going to have a collective conversation, ask, um, ask questions, learn more about the circus itself, um, art of the circus, the history of art of the circus, and share an uplifting humorous time. So with that, Karen, would you, as the curator and also as a circus artist yourself, give a little bit of your own background and then what you, what was um, some of the, the North stars you had when creating the show? And I will be sharing the show and screen sharing it while we're all talking so we can all see it together. Okay, so um, like Mia, who is, is also here with me, we, we both went to Pratt, uh, Pratt Art Institute in Brooklyn. That's how we met. And um, I've been in, immersed in circus and in, enamored of circus since I was a child, way before that. And um, early drawings of circuses, little shows that came to town I would follow um, in, in Rockland County where I grew up and um, went to Pratt and uh, as a fine artist, uh, painter, illustrator, and graduated and went, promptly went on the road with circus, uh, packed my paints, packed my art supplies and began traveling. Um, I also, Mia and I also studied with two Russians. We're Russian trained, uh, Nina Krasavina and Gregory Fedyen, um, who were from the Moscow circus and who defected here. And uh, we both studied with them. I'm gonna let Mia tell you about her, her side of it. Um, and um, we were both founding members of the Big Apple Circus. Um, and then I went on to also uh, help found Circus Smirkus, which is Vermont's uh, One Ring Circus. Um, but throughout my performing career, I've always painted and drawn. Um, and primarily circus, it's, it still remains my, you know, most, uh, the, the theme that most, you know, I'm most passionate about in terms of what I depict. Um, and in later years, I've really, uh, this is Joe's work. Um, he's a silversmith. Um, and, um, hi Beth. Hey, <laughs> hey Beth. Hey. And, uh, in, in, I've really become in you know recent years really into the history um, of art in circus and uh, circus in art, and um, so I have an entire lecture that I do a visual lecture that I present in museums and universities now that um, shows. Um, a classic artwork or artwork from the start of time um, going back 4000 years where there is evidence of, of art of circus that existed in painting, ceramics, sculptures, uh, uh, you name it, prints, um, until up to, and this show, um, I tried to make a mix of some classic 
pieces and some contemporary artists who also love circus and depict them in very different ways. So I was looking for a range of styles of mediums of technique and a feeling. And, um, but overall, I think it captures the dynamics and the beauty of, of circus. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, it does. I mean, uh, stop yes, me. Uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so let's, let's focus on uh, finding out more about what's behind the artistic processes and North Stars and the intentions. And as we go through the show, here we're, we're almost at the end of it. Um, let's begin. Let's begin with you, Mia. What do you want to know? Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go back up here to one of your works. And why don't you, you start, just, start you talk with about a, it? Why don't you start with the circus, not that one, but the one before it, which is I'll a little that. straightforward. Then we can go to that one. Oh, Look, no, 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 I went too far. There. Okay. Um, well, that this this painting has two ways of looking at it. The obvious one, it's this is actually my circus trunk, and those are actually my circus costumes. So that's pretty straightforward. And you know, you could get into the whole thing of how do you paint satin, how do you paint velvet, how do you paint rhinestones, which is a whole technical aspect, and then the colors, but Mia, yeah. can I can I just interrupt and, and have you preface that you were an aerialist? Oh yeah, I was a catcher in a double trapeze act, which meant I it's not flying trapeze. You hang by your knees and your partner hangs from you, and then various events take place. Circus. <laughs> I also did a balancing act where I was an <laughs> understander person on a rolling globe. Uh, but yeah, I was in the circus. So these, these were our costumes. I had a partner and we had matching costumes, which I, she and I would design them. I mostly designed them. She mostly sewed them because I'm not good at, I would put rhinestones in, but Donna did most of the sewing. But this painting has another level, which nobody would ever know except me. But as you can see, the red costume is sort of levitating. And I actually used my actual, I painted this from life and I rigged up the red costume with fishing wire and attached it to poles so it would be floating. But the reason I did that was my son had been born not that long ago, maybe a year, maybe not quite a year. And I don't know why I decided to do this painting. I just did. And it's an allegory or a metaphor for childbirth, the red costume is my son the trunk is my body and out comes this baby but it's <laughs> and that's no you, you would never know this but that is in there that was sort of what I was thinking and and I also just wanted to paint the costumes and I wanted a challenge because you know as you see the pattern of the the cloth on the trunk it's tricky so it's sort of a you know Matisse goes to the circus filtered through my brain a little bit. Also, the tricky thing was getting the rhinestones. How do you paint a rhinestone? You know, the, the starburst of the sun. And also, one of the things I liked about the circus, besides the heroic aspect of the physicality, is is the costumes and the makeup and the glitter. And I adore that shit. I still do. I still have piles of rhinestones. And uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Are there questions about it or questions? Yeah, about it? yeah. So. Being a painter who can paint rhinestones and satin and and create these illusions, yeah, like they're like illusionary textures in a way. But so, will you talk a little bit about your history as a visual artist that's concurrently arising with your history as an aerialist? I don't know if they have anything obvious. I mean, I went to art school and then I ran around the circus, and it's all Karen's fault. Um, it never would have happened if I hadn't met her. I mean, I was very interested in physical things, but circus hadn't occurred to me, but we used to do things on the street. She'd be the clown, I'd fall down. And then it, she met um, Gregory and Nina and I trained with them. And the, 
oh my God, in the basement of a frozen Bronx high school with no heat, <laughs> no running water. It, it was it was very Russian, you know. I mean, I, I I went from this sort of blobby person to this sort of super person. Eventually, it took a while, which was. Um, but did that have a parallel with the painting? I don't know. Um, I was very interested in both of them. And I, I, I'm the kind of person, if I see something I'm interested, I just run after it. And I've, I've been an artist ever since I can remember. I remember stuff I did in kindergarten. So it evolved gradually. I went to art school and then I ran away with the circus. Then I came back. And I did do a children's book about the circus um, a while back, right after my son was born called Catcher with Ferris Strauss. So I did do that. So in that sense, it started to overlap. And occasionally I have done images from the circus, some of which got tossed when I moved because I decided they weren't good enough to save. But um, I don't know, it, it may be more of an interweaving than it's not like Karen who has a very strong parallel with her interests in both sides. And she still, you know, has been teaching circus forever. And she does that cool presentation lecture she does and she draws and paints it. I weave in and out of things, although the book I, just finished does have some circus imagery in the end so were you were you painting while you were like a full-time performer no oh, we were I, just talking about that before no i i pretty much i mean i was on the i mean when i was on the big apple probably i did i don't remember i, I think i was still painting then although i was not painting circus per se but when i went on the road you're driving you're setting up rigging yeah, yeah no. twice and then you're getting back in and you're driving again and i i took some photographs i took a i did a couple drawings but what i did was i painted in my head i would look at things and i would imagine mixing the colors and i would imagine painting and before i left for the circus i was more of a well i was trying to be a minimalist which is pretty funny but <laughs> but when i came back to new york Eventually, I immediately started painting realistically or figuratively and using really intense colors, which is really more natural to me. So yeah. those kind of things run parallel, but the imagery or I'm not a very literal, analytical kind of person. You know, stuff just comes into my head. I'm like, OK, the universe wants me to paint that. So I paint that. So sometimes circus imagery comes up like this one, the one of um that's on the screen now. If you scroll down, you can see Don, that's Don and I doing our act. That was part of the act. I held the hoop and she hung at one point hung by her heels. And the reason it's all cloudy is because we had some outdoor ringing. We didn't work in the tent. Well, sometimes we were inside, but we didn't, they did the show didn't have a tent. So we were either outside or we were inside a building of some sort, sometimes tiny, like a cow palace or sometimes gigantic three ring thingamajig like Madison Square Garden but when you're outside sometimes weather so and then you go below and that's Mayor Baba who's a very famous guru from India who I have some affiliation with and he, he he really liked pink and he liked umbrellas and somehow the two of these went together I don't know how that happened but it seems appropriate <laughs> that one is visiting one or one they're visiting each other and he also had a great sense of humor. So yeah. it's, sort of, it's sort of funny a little bit. I mean, it's sort of pure circus on the top. And there was this thing people always used to make jokes about in the circus. You'd say, how are you going to rig? They said, oh, use the sky hook, which is a joke because there's no such thing as a sky hook. But in this case, we're kind of like hanging from the sky, which kind of goes with the mystical guru walking below. And of course, there is no grass in the center of the ring. But I thought he should have grass. You know, and it's <laughs> green is the opposite of pink with the umbrella. I mean, this is how my brain works. So that's how that painting together came together. I mean, I don't own it anymore. And the guy that owns it, he said he hung it in his house and he had, he said guests come to him all the time and they say, What does it mean? And he was just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He had no idea. He just loved it and he bought it. So there you go. I don't know. I mean, if you ask me specific questions, I can tell you, but it's a, it's a very organic painting, an atmospheric painting between between all the nature that you him, I love. I love that you've placed them and then the spirituality of him passing casually and looking up and capturing. Sort of the, like, hey, you know. You know. <laughs> it, it, 
it's wonderful magic and we may have more yes. questions when we have a question period towards the end so uh joe let's look at some of your design it's yeah oh there yeah yes and let's go it's up here you passed it yeah. i did yeah there we go <laughs> so will you will you give us will you give us some insight into your creative process and your inspiration? I doubt it. Um, <laughs> he, he just makes things, you know. Or or here's a question that I love to ask too: What would we never know about this work unless you told us? Oh my! Again, again, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. He's he's, he's, gonna he, he's too nice him. to blame me, but I forced him to make some circus jewelry. He's a very fine silversmith. Oh. He works a lot from nature, to, but I said you got to do some circus jewelry. So I kind of pushed him, and and I mean I just gave him that sense. I didn't say do this. But this is what he came up with, which I thought was fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Blame it on the wife. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Was there anything different for you about making work about circus versus the other subject matter that you create about? It's hard to think of it as jewelry. It's just a piece of brass. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, when it comes down to it, it's just a bunch of oil and yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, materials are materials. It's what you make of it and, and what you who you inspire. I mean, um, I don't know, Mia, if you can tell that's Jesse who bought that that earring. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it looks nice on. I like it on. It, yeah. it's a better that's it's for the small. size. I wanted that so that you could see that it's considerable size. Um, Joe, as you can tell, is quite show, uh, shy and reticent about talking about himself. Um. <laughs> it's interesting. It has this sense of nature. That, I mean, the shape is very shape oriented. It looks almost like a tree or something. I mean, just because you said you do mostly nature, it's stuff that's inspired by nature. So it, there's a connection for me. I think that's the way I see it. Perhaps well, you're misshaped. That's why. Yeah, I do like perhaps the work speaks for itself also. So Karen, let's look at some of yours. It's right here. Oh well, wait, you, you didn't they, what about his tiger? Oh, is it up or down? Down. I think it's down. It's down. It's down. And now in the center of the screen, we have we go. the tiger. <laughs> it's the tiger. <laughs> I'd wear that. No yes, animals were harmed in the making of this jewelry. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, in, in Joe did um, in his chosen work, he created a, a tea diffuser um, in the shape of a dragon, a really intricate silver uh, uh, tea infuser that, that won the Felissimo um, uh, Award in 1995. Is that Sounds right? reasonable. Yeah. Um, so animals and nature are, are part of, of what he normally likes to emulate with his work. Um, silver, white gold, brass. Um, yeah. Chunks of metal. Yeah. So there we go from the bottom up. So these are some of as we go towards learning more about your works, Karen, these are some other things that you've curated in, which we can also spend a moment on after we speak with you. There's behind the scenes, there's in front of the scenes. There's the ornate. That's the Laura scrappy. Knight again, Mia. There's the scrappy. And let's hear from you on this. Will you give us some insight? Um, on on room. This is one of a series of um, casing gouache uh, paintings of French clowns from the turn of the century that I did, um, you know, back in the uh, 80s, um, 80s and 90s. 
I was, um, that's when I was in Paris often and I stayed with a good friend who had a remarkable book that she rarely even opened, let people see because it was so old. And it had, um, it had the, the transparent sleeves over the um, uh, it, it prints in it. And they were black and white um, photos, these very old photos of clowns, the portraits of them. And so I would work from that. Um, that book really became because they were, the book is out of print. It's so rare. It's a rare edition. You can't find it. And these photos are just incredibly beautiful of these clowns. And you don't, you don't find many good photos of clowns from that era. And these were legendary clowns working in the top circuses and all over Europe. And uh, room, um, was was you know especially uh um but i you know there were about a dozen or more that i did um and i just chose him um for for this show hmm. i wish philomena was on because i i was excited to hear about you know her her She's a contemporary artist working in Florida. I knew her from Brooklyn. She used to live in Brooklyn and she was into marine life and sea life. And she did these wonderful paper cuts of fish and marine life. And um, is, is that Jeff? Yes. Ah! <laughs> Hello. 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 Nice to see you. <laughs> Okay, Francais, but, but, but I'm sorry, my English is very, very poor. Uh, no, c'est pas vrai. C'est très bien. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, welcome. <laughs> Let's go look at Jeff. Uh, yeah. I, I err you. I, I just discover your mail. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Great! Okay. Here you go. I, je suis contente. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Pat is my my friend, and we yeah. we, we work together. Uh, it's very uh, um, it's a, a nice time together. Okay. okay. We we walk in the in the in the street during uh, uh, when we were younger it was seven years but now four years <laughs> <laughs> per day yeah and, yeah and all the time there is something to to do to to make pictures the people the, the reaction I, I I like the the reaction of the people yeah yeah, uh, yeah. the the moments you catch are so beautiful. Let me just explain for everyone that this, Jeff is the photographer and his partner friend is um, a good friend of mine, Pat Bellon. And when I went with my first French circus, it was La Compagnie Foraine in, in, in France. And Pat was the ringmaster, mm. Monsieur Loyal, he's called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Monsieur Loyal. And he was also the tent master. He was also the, the electrical director, the technical director. He also drove me everywhere. I drove with him. He, he's great. And we've remained yeah. very good friends. And yeah. I visit him when I'm there. And, but now a days, and he's had a long career performing with circus, but nowadays he has this beautiful clown, clown character he's developed. And he goes around the world to, to different countries, they bring him in to festivals, outdoor festivals, yeah. street festivals, and Jeff always goes with him. And uh -huh. he, Pat just, it's improvisation. He interacts with everyone he meets, with the people on the street, and Jeff captures these moments. It's a beautiful partnership, and, and it's just wonderful to see the moments <laughs> that come out of it, just precise and so I, 
emotive. We, we, we start, well, we, 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 uh, I know Pat from a long time in yes. a company, but uh, in about, uh, I remember it was in 2014, he phoned to me and he said, uh, I have an idea because in Krakow, in Poland, Mm -hmm. uh, there is a festival, and the the the, the theme uh, is the clown. And I want to be clown. Uh, Pat says that, and he, he he says, but I want to be without. Uh, I, I can't speak. Mm -hmm. I go yes. to I go to to the people. But I want to uh, to make this with you, with me, with me, <laughs> the clown and the photograph, and yes. and it's a, a a very nice time. We we are, we start in Poland, and uh, when we were in Poland, the director of the festival from uh, Korea, South Korea, Seoul, saw us and. Uh, we go to Seoul and after to Germany and after to Holland. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very nice time. <laughs> I, I stopped to speak because... Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's good. It's, it's clear. <laughs> I hear you hey, now. <laughs> do, you, do you always do black and white photos, Jeff? Um, of, um, for, for the people on, in the street, I use black and white okay. because uh, I, I think the color uh, uh, gives too much information. Uh, uh. I, I prefer to have the 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 uh, uh, le visage, the face, yes, the face, the, the, yes. the, the expression of the people. Oui. Because uh, Pat said, I don't want to, to, to uh, you take picture of me, but of the people, but I, I do the, the, the twice. <laughs> but now I have a, a big uh, exhibition in a town near uh, where we live. I, I, can, I can give you a, a link if you want. Uh, uh, and it's a sort of uh, retrospective, you, you oui. know? Well, oui. a, a sort of retrospective, and I have some um, uh, picture in color and other in black and white. I have the twice. Uh, I like the twice thing, the twice pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> but I, I am a, a, a spect a, a pre. A, a, a spectator, uh, privilégié. You, you understand? Privilégié in front. Mm -hmm. uh, privilege, privilege. Privilege, yes. Privilege. And, and it's very, uh, all my life, I I look the people and, uh, and the show and uh, <laughs> it's my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, art is life. I completely agree. Art is life. <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, thank you thank to you. you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so let's hear a little bit about some more of the works that you have here, Karen. Will you tell us about Annie? Sure. I, I don't understand. Um, sorry, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, so this is a portrait of Annie Fratellini, who is the granddaughter of the great Fratellini clowns, uh, uh, the trio. Mm. Um, and it's Annie who started um, the French um, circus school that um, using the idea of, of faculty and students um, creating a show together. Um, that model, role model, um, really was, was um, original in, and she created that in France and I saw her one of her first shows early on and and I 
went and sat in the stands and I just wept because it was so beautiful. It was just such a fabulous show. And uh, um, and, and her character is just so gammon. It's just, and she was a fantastic musician as well with her husband, Pierre Tex. She, she, they did duos, but she also worked alone. Um, so this was a portrait I did of her. Oh, this is um, a piece of a, a painting I did, um, mixed media, but acrylic. And I worked from a very grainy black and white photograph that I took on this lot in 1969, when I would go follow any circuses that came to the area where I lived, I would go follow them and I had this horrible little camera and I snapped this black and white photo. And that's what I used to work from to make this, um, to create, because I always loved that photo. And I, um, but I added the color, uh, um, kind of muted, but, but um, it, you know, to give the sense of the um, antiquity of the, this show. It's very it's old. It's interesting that you're saying that you're putting the color back in, in and yeah. Jeff is saying you're taking the color out. The color out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and this is this is my favorite style of working, which is line drawings from life. And this is um, something I've always done and do. And this is um, what I do at all the circuses and that I go to and all the shows I go to. And um, uh, um, and I've become quite adept at not looking at the page, simply seeing and drawing one continual line or, you know, a few lines capturing what is is the essence of what's happening. And for me, this is really exciting the most, I guess, like for you, Jeff, the black and white photo, for me, the line drawing is mm -hmm. really it is, it is really nice. I do, I actually, I forgot, I have a bunch of these drawings too, not as much as you. I, I have more of musicians, but it's sort of like you're drawing blind. Yeah. I mean, you're looking, but you're just throw it to the wind and and then you just turn the page and later you look and see what you did. Yeah. I mean, that's how I do it. It is very, it is very exciting because I know with musicians, when I do this, I always feel like I'm part of the band. And I guess when you're doing it with circus people, especially having been in the circus, you feel like you're participating. There's a mm -hmm. kind of energy that goes sort of back and forth. I don't yeah. know, is it like that for you? Yeah. And it, it, for me, it's a, it's a really, it's a focusing in in a di very different way. Um, and I'm really paying homage to the performer because I'm not looking at what I'm doing. I'm watching them. Well, that's the trick. It, it's you know, the hand-eye coordination yeah. that, you know, we learned early on and practiced. I had forgotten about those. Yeah. <laughs> and I did that too. And I'll talk about... Um, yeah, if would, you go you, down, would, you, would you like to speak to some of the other works? What would you like to point to? Well, Philomena, as I said, came from Brooklyn, and and I was curating for sixteen years on a, a showboat in in Brooklyn, the the Waterfront Museum. I was um, well, I was the artistic director for putting together international um, circus vaudeville shows for sixteen years on this barge, and then I also curated the exhibitions. We had um, um, art shows. And I found Philomena and fell in love with her work. And, and um, we did one exhibition that was um, marine themed, that was themed on the a sea and um, fish in the ocean. And um, she had, when she started doing cut paper and um, she was doing that. And I just loved her work. The, the simplicity and yet the depth that she got out of cut paper assemblages. Then she moved to Florida and Sarasota, which is circus land, and she started doing circus imagery. And um, she, and 
so this is, uh, um, I mean, this is fantastically detailed. Uh, um, this is a print. She goes between cut paper and the um, prints. Um, uh, well, it is cut paper, but she does prints of them. Um, and she, she gets to see all the acts because she goes down to the shows down there. Um, and and she's really um, really captured. I think the the contemporary acts, this crazy stuff with motorcycles in in metal cages. And uh, I would never take that on with cut paper. Give me paint any day. I mean, yeah, to do that with yeah. cut paper is like. I mean, pictures. look at the detail of that. It's amazing. <laughs> One of the other things about this piece is that it's incredibly delicate cut paper about an activity that has no delicateness to it whatsoever, which is riding a motorcycle in a wire cage. Oh, <laughs> and I find that ironic. Wait, wait, I, I must disagree with you. I imagine, I never, I mean, I have driven a motorcycle when I was much younger, but I imagine it's a very delicate act. It seems like, but I mean, your balance, your sense of movement, the split second decisions, I mean, there, I would say that's high degree of delicacy. It just doesn't would, appear that way, you know? No, I, I get what you're saying though. Barbara. I would say I yeah, now yeah. completely agree with you and the level of nuance it takes to ride a motorcycle in a wire cage is probably related to the level of nuance it takes to make cut paper about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I but I'm just know. gonna point out, there's two motorcycles and a woman standing in the center. And I mean, if you haven't seen this act, it's crazy suspenseful because the motorcycles are going ah, and they're making a lot of noise and they're going around she's standing there calmly in the center well she couldn't do it unless she was calm i wouldn't do it but hey maybe they know. tied her feet i don't know they may. They may. <laughs> um big act of so, trust uh, karen are there other works you'd like to call out and then we'll um I, I wanted to include this work by Paul Clay because it's just so fabulous. To me, it's so circus, even though it's abstract, you know, so, uh, nearly purely abstract, but it's just the color and the and the the characterization of the of the shapes and the figures and um the horse and the girl with her leg up and the clownish figure. It's just, a, I think, a magnificent piece uh, uh, that really feels like circus. And, and, and he didn't do many. Um, he, I mean, he did wonderfully magical pieces, Paul Clay, um, but it wasn't that he did many circus pieces. It just really struck me, this one. Again, here's Philomena. Yeah. Um, that's La Dame Laura Knight, Mia, another one of hers. The, the luminosity right. she gets with the paint is just remarkable. Oh, I she's think. good. She's yeah. good. Yeah. And I like that she's got the transparency of the costumes and the draping and the, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, we're just backstage tuning up with the horses and there's the guy, the horse handler. And yeah, again, back backstage. It's so lovely. Yeah. The, um, Backstage. Yeah. And that's Philomena again. Um, um, Vortex of Doom, wonderful title. <laughs> <laughs> and this is contemporary. This is a very contemporary, you know, with the apparatus, especially um, uh, uh, circus act. And of course, it's something you would see down in Florida where they all, you know, winter and spend a lot of time practicing. For it's like a show. really nice day to be caught in the vortex of doom. <laughs> it's such a cheerful, a cheerful background for the vortex of doom. It's fine. Well, balance. balance. It's all good unless it's too hot. And believe me, I know about too hot because then the rigging heats up and you, you almost burn your hands. So no. I hope this um, was a cool day. I, wait, come, come back to Henri. Um, um, I, I, Jeff, tu connais Henri Akilzo? No. Okay. No. Neither did I. He's, pour moi, c'est nouveau. I mm -hmm. found him and 
this is just such a beautiful painting for the light and the and the mm -hmm. perspective. Um, uh, he was trained by his father, who ran a um, uh, an academy in, mm -hmm. in um, and so he's been painting, you know, since he was young. And he didn't do many circus, but this one just appealed to me because I hadn't seen it before. They don't people. They don't usually do point of view of the aerialist. When I did the kids book, that was one of the things I tried to do. What does it feel like to be up there? Uh -huh. I mean, in this picture, everything is fully lit. And I don't know if back then they did that or they had spotlights. But when I work, you're in a spotlight. You can't see anything else. It's a sea of dark. So you're like in outer space. So yeah. you're you're encapsulated in this very other physical spot, which is interesting. You know, you, you basically, the light lights you up, your partner and the rigging. This is, you know, when you're working inside with spotlights. If you're working outside, I remember once we were good friends with the ringmaster and we were at a football field in some high school. We used to play all sorts of weird places. We're in the center ring. And so the audience is pretty far away. They can't hear us. So the wing, ringmaster comes underneath us. And when Donna was hanging down, he starts telling us a joke in the middle of the act. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, and we're doing our tricks. And, you know, sometimes it's like that. So it's sort of amusing. And it's that should, I should have, I don't know how you do That's more like a graphic novel thing because it's an ongoing joke. But I once heard the flyers tell me a story that, you know, you know, in the passing leap where people go back and forth, you know, the beginning of the joke would happen here and the end of the joke would come up. <laughs> back. So there's that aspect of circus and then there's aspect when you're, you know, you're up there and you're in a spotlight or you're like this and you're very, you see the people, but they're, they're it's not, you're not paying attention to them. You're paying it, to, you know, they're there and you want them to like it, but it's, and you're performing, but you're in this completely other world. And it's nice that, that he got that, you know, that other place. It's very other. Yeah. Yeah. It's also very, it's also interesting to hear you describing with tremendous familiarity, a point of view in a scene that the majority of humans don't know, but this particular point of view is incredibly familiar to you as an aerialist. Well, you know, think of being an astronaut, you know? I mean, it's when you do circus, it's it's what you do. It isn't, it's only amazing in wet retrospect when you're, when you're old and creaky like me and you look at the pictures and just, the hell did I do that? And, even, and I still have the muscle memory of holding on and actually how I did the tricks. I, I remember I, you know, my body can't do it anymore. But a part of me is like, wow. And the other part of me is like, yeah, yeah, that's just what we did. <laughs> Karen, how do you relate to that as an acrobat? What she's saying? Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I, I think one of the saddest, I ran around for 30 years with a woman on my head, balanced on my head, ran around circus rings. That was that was my happy place. That was my centering place. And I miss that so much. I'm with I you miss that now. weight on my shoulders and my and my head. I was an understander. I carried people. And 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 that balance. They're just it was a finite feeling that you don't have anywhere else. So I I, I I've missed that. Teaching is, is it helps a little. But, um... You know, I have a theory when I taught circus camp for a while and I taught wire, which I never did professionally, but I wasn't, I could do it. I understood how to do it. And this is very low wire. And I taught the kids to how to walk on the wire. And one of the things I noticed was when you were doing it, because you had the, your center has to be very aligned and you don't break your center or then you start falling off. So you move your arms to balance, but you don't break the line of your body. And it's very satisfying when you do it right. So I was like, why does it feel so good? And then I thought, well, you're lining all your chakras up or it doesn't work. So now I don't know what happens when you're doing aerial work because everything is moving. So you, maybe you're lined up and you're twirling and twisting. And obviously when you're understanding, which I did some of too, you have to line up the same way. And I always wondered if then, and then all the magic fairy dust energy like can travel up and down. And is that why it feels so good? I don't know. You know, I'm going to say, yes, that's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> so as we so as we we've looked at the show and heard some great stories and um, from our artists, we can explore some questions for each other. 
some mm -hmm. questions about particular works or the stories or the life in the circus or any I have I have a question for Karen. Great. What is that? This has to when I left the circus, it was premature because there was an accident. Everybody's okay now, but I came back sooner than I would have wanted to. And I miss the circus like, you know, the best boyfriend you ever had, the best husband you ever had. <laughs> it was like heartbreak. And I immediately went back to painting. And at one point in the midst of a painting where I was just sitting on a stool because there was all these details on the, the corners and there were flowers. And, I'm, and I remember sitting in my old loft in Tribeca and I'm painting and I said, this is as good as the circus. And it took me a really long time to get that. I mean, I still miss the physicality, but I found that the art somehow filled in that place of that terrible sort of, you know, melancholy that came to fill me up when I left. I don't know, Karen, I mean, you never really completely left. So I don't know if that ever happened to you, anything like that. Oh, I did leave. I, I mean, I stopped performing. And I think what you're saying, um, I, for me, the the moments in which i felt i have felt the two moments in which i feel most most centered and content in my life is as i said when i'm in the trance of making a painting or when i had someone standing on my head and especially when i was climbing a ladder and they were standing because there is a focus there that's required that makes you disappear into yourself and you're right you the more you disappear the better yeah and and that feeling that sensation i don't find many other places but those two um elements of activity were where i most found it to me it was you know um spiritual it was oh yeah definitely i yeah. I think that's true. I was just curious. If yeah. You yeah. So, questions? Yes. Do you have questions? We have other questions. Um, Jeff, you won't. Will you put? Will you put the uh, link to your show? I I I, I write to Pat, and I try to have Pat on uh, Zoom. Yeah. You, okay. I emailed him. <laughs> yeah. It's a little. I phoned. <laughs> Um, and I, I suppose I can say Paul, unfortunately, um, Paul was, it, it, it is a wonderful um, photographer who has spent his, he's so in love with circus and he's never, he doesn't um, really sell his work. Everybody in, in the circus world knows him because he just goes to every circus he can and takes photos and they're gorgeous photos. Um, this is Jeff Gordon, who is a Big Apple Circus clown, uh, um, very well known, beautiful clown, and uh, um, it's just such a wonderful portrait. It's it's. Uh... Uh, go back down to the print. I want to uh, again, thank you, Barbara, and this is. Um, this was a gift from a very dear friend of mine, and it blew me away. It was a birthday gift arrived in a huge box from Europe, and it's an original lithograph by this um, artist, Pablo Roig, who from the turn of the century, and I had to look him up, although there came with a provenance and a, a whole, you know, paperwork, um, and she had come across it and thought I should have it, and um, I, I, I mean, I, it's just an incredible work. It's not small either. And, um, I, and I didn't know him. I had to look him up um, to see. He, he, um, he was enamored of, if you might be able to tell, by Toulouse-Lautrec and Degas and, you know, um, and it's certainly that period of, of circus time. Um, uh, and this is the activity that you're describing of carrying someone around on your head. Yes, that's the people I carried around stood on my head. This one is head to head, which is even more fantastic. Harder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah much harder. And um, but I just love the looseness of the arms and and, you know, 
um, I've, I've seen people draw circus acrobats and they're rather stiff or not. They, the, and anatomically or, or technique wise is off, something's off the balance. You couldn't balance the way they depict them. So I appreciate when something is whew, pure as an acrobat would do. Yeah, and you can feel that viscerally in your body from the familiarity that you have. So uh, do we have more questions? Here's your big chance to know all the backdoor secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So thank you. But but try to 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 come. Yes. Now. Yes. I, it, yes. Yes. And he, his English is better than mine. Yours is very good. <laughs> Yours is very good. <laughs> we don't speak French. Most of us don't speak French, so you're doing uh, a lot better than we are. Jeff, is he trying to come right now? He is tried. He... he tried to to. Oh, he tried. I okay. asked Pascal. So, thank you everyone for being here, and thank you Karen for curating, and thank you to Joe, and thank you to Mia and Jeff for sharing your stories and your Hello. works and what you're about. Uh, are we oops <laughs> <laughs> i i email i emailed them before yes uh, earlier and i don't know we can we can create more we can create more conversations it's been it's been quite illuminating to hear both about the artistic process of uh, documenting creating and innovating imagery about these lived experiences, that's that's extraordinary to 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 be in two art forms at once, where it's there's this this physical experience of being in the ring and in the circus and with the audiences, Wait, and then yeah, also yeah. translating that into visual art. For, I don't know how common it is for. Uh, visual artists to be du, du performers or for performers to be visual que... artists. <laughs> but here we've been fortunate to have que both. Uh... Um, so I'm not sure if if Jeff is in the process non, of un... Pat non, being about non, to non, arrive non, here, ça, ça or if we should just take that as okay. as um, some like uh, heckling on the loud. side. I don't know what we want to do. T'as cliqué, no? But Pat is a very good clown and he speaks very well English, but he's not good with informatics, with computer. He tried, he tried. We forgive him. <laughs> it's okay, uh, he tried. Um, um, Karen, do you want hey, to wait a moment hey, for that or do you want to let it go? Ça a installé, est -ce que tu as installé Zoom? Is... Ouais, Is it... ben lance la réunion. Normalement, ça va, ça va, il va apparaître. C'est possible de. En juin ou non? Non, je. Euh... Ok. You try? Yeah. Say, bisous. There he is. There bisous. He is. Ah. Where? There he is. Yeah. And he is there. Hey! Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow, yes. he looks like a ghost. Oh. <laughs> Phantom. <laughs> Pat. Yes, it's me. Can you hear me? Can you hear you? I can hear you. Ah, okay. No, no, you don't. It's too flu. Sorry, it's in the very old computer. <laughs> <laughs> It's French. <laughs> a French, it's com old. French computer. <laughs> yeah, it's a very old one. It's coming from the Middle Age, you know. It's a wooden one. <laughs> it's sorry, <weird>. sorry. <laughs> but it's me. Sure, it's me. Oui. Yeah. It's so nice, nice to meet you. you. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> we've, we've, we're at the end, but maybe you can just tell us, Pat, a few things about your photos here that, that um, your clown and your, your work with Jeff. Um, yeah, maybe. I just <laughs> not sure, you know. Pat, can uh, you maybe. can you take uh, your yeah? No, no, okay, it is what it is. At this moment, my wife tried to clean <laughs> our old camera. Ah, uh, 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 okay. okay. Oh. Welcome. Good evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in fact. Uh, we decide to make a street performance about clown acting. But you know, I'm not a clown. I'm an actor. I'm a comedian. And I try to be clown, but I'm not really clown. Mm. I'm not, I'm not I, beg, I beg to differ, but go I'm on. not Karen Gersh, you know. I'm just Pat B, and Pat B is not very clown. Uh, no, the idea was we were we were invited in Poland at the festival street international street theater festival. Uh, it was eight years ago, and the director of this festival, an old friend of mine, he says that uh, this year, eight years ago, it was festival was about clowns, and in, invites me. Uh, not as clown, but uh, as just a friend and observer, and uh, you know, just be part of this festival. And I decided at this moment to go to Poland to this festival, but not uh, only uh, like observer, but uh, I I decided to try to to be a clown in this festival. And the idea was the clown come by plane. Arrived by plane, uh, in plane, is a clown. He came uh, at the airport in clown, in the with, with the costume and, and the makeup, as a, like the Pope. And he he came out of the fly, and he kissed the the floor, like the Pope, you know. And the idea was during the festival, this clown was always following by TV, uh, newspapers, reporters, photographers, and so on. But he was, he's, he's a mute clown. He don't speak. That was the idea. And my wife, uh, who is the <laughs> woman of my life, <laughs> says, but uh, I, so I asked the festival to ask, uh, the TV and the reporter and everything and the director say, okay, Pat, you're going to have the TV and everything. But in fact, uh, we were late. The plane were late. We arrived in the night. There is no TV. But my <laughs> wife had the idea that the clown travel with his own photograph. <laughs> and we were, uh, Jeff and I, we know each other and we have... Uh, before that, we have uh, uh, worked together in festival and in street, and I decided to to go to this festival with uh, a photographer and with with Jeff because Jeff is the best photographer. <laughs> and then, then we start this performance. Uh, voilà. mm, Jeff and I, I am the clown, mute, mute, and Jeff is the photographer. And the first. The first year we made it every day, we are performing around six hours nonstop. Wow. Wow. In the city, everywhere in the city. Wow. <laughs> With no, no program. We don't know. We start from the hotel and go back six hours after without stop. Go back to the hotel. And when we start, we don't know where we are going just following the idea following the people so it it was unbelievable incredible and then pat, pat you said that jeff is the best photographer why yeah. is he the best photographer for you because he's the best because, photographer for you so why is that yeah yeah for me i don't know why 
<laughs> I've worked with different photographers, but he is the best. It's the magic of one, one thing about the photographer. One thing very, very important for me is when I perform in the street during many hours long during a day, I move, I, I meet people and go inside the head, the, the shops outside, in the police station, in, in the bus, in the tramway, everywhere. And Jeff is always here, but I don't see him. Ah, yeah. see him. invisible, yeah. He, he is invisible, but he is always with me. And for, for example, in, in, a, in the day he can shoot Jeff told if if I'm right, but you can shoot five thousand. No, 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 five thousand, five hundred, five hundred, five hundred, five hundred. Oh. <laughs> and at the end of the of the day, he made in the hotel. He made the selection of around fifty. Mm. Well, Choose fifty pictures we give to the organization. And they can do what they want with the, with the wow. pictures. Wow. Pat, will you so tell us about this one? What? This one? Tell, yeah, tell us about this experience. Mm -hmm. this, this one, this <laughs> photo? Yeah, yes. Was, this woman was uh, 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 selling flowers on the big, big places in the center of Krakow in Poland. She was uh, the florist, I don't know, uh, flowers, shops, yeah. She, she flowers, yeah. 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 And uh, I decided you took, you, 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 has, took, you took the scissors. Yeah, she has <laughs> a pair of scissors, pair, pair of scissors, and I, I just I just play like a like a hair cutter. <laughs> but she was okay. She was okay. <laughs> I don't cut, but it's <laughs> <laughs> very it's very smart. I have another, I have another question for you also, Pat. Um, which is, uh, do you have a difference of experience when you are with children or when you, and when you are with adults or no? It's a good question. <laughs> Not really. I mean, um, I'm asking you that I also have done a lot of clown in the street. And I don't experience a difference between the children and the adults, particularly. No. I think maybe the children have more energy and they're more and they they respond more physically. Yeah. But yeah. not yeah. but not from the, they're the same on the inside. They're just different on the outside. And I'm wondering if you've experienced that too, or if if it's different for you. I no. think that's a circus thing. I don't think that's a clown thing or an acrobat thing. I think that's a once you get in the if you really do it right and you get the in the realm of the circus, age goes away. That's why yeah, people but, come and do it, you know. Yeah, but, but for me, it's it's quite the same because there is also children who are afraid of clowns. Yeah, uh, and yeah. there is also adults who are afraid of clowns. There is few adults who told us, "Please go away. We don't like clowns. Please, no, go away." It's it's strange, but it is, you know. Uh, about the children, uh, maybe the, the, the thing is sometimes the children are very, uh, how to say, in English it's not easy. They are, mm, they are with their parents. And when they are with their parents, they don't, they don't be really children. They, they, they are children with the parents. And if the parents have not... something about the feeling that uh, between the we can see on the children's faces that the parents keep who direct them you know you understand what i mean yeah. so yeah. that is uh, because this photo for example it's a group of uh, young uh, girls and, and boys in school from school and they were very open and uh, the the adult who were responsible of them was not in in but she she just stay out hmm. and they let she let them do what they want with me she don't uh, um, interfere she don't act 
you know, and that is very important. I remember when we used to do work in the Big Apple and sometimes we'd have matinees and they'd bring all the kids in. Now you got to remember these are New York City kids. They could be pretty rambunctious and even sometimes they say, oh, fall, fall. I mean, they're very uncontrolled, but they were also respond positively too. But you're right, when they're out from under the parental thing, yeah, you're yeah. getting full bore. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you, you, you have been with, uh, with Big Apple Circus? Yeah, I had I was in an aerial act. I was a catcher and a double. Uh, I met I met Big Apple Circus. It was a long time ago in uh, Baltimore uh, International Theater Festival. It I was, was just with them for the first couple years. It, it, was, uh, it was in eighty. Yeah. 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 That sounds right. Then so I went Pat, with the West Coast. So go ahead. Pat, Pat. Alan Gersh, yes. Pat, hello. Uh, I'm going to expose you. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story of you as Monsieur Leal in the Compagnie Foreign. Mm. And we were asked, mm -hmm. to, I was asked to create, Adrienne was having trouble with her magic act with the timing and she needed another clown reprise. So she came to me the morning of the show mm. and said, mm. you have to have another reprise, another act. And I went, I do? And she said, yes. And I went, oh, my God. So I went to you and I said, oh, oh, what do we do? What do we do? I have to come up with something. And remember, um, Iago, he was, what, two years old? Yeah. And we'd, we would play a game. He would, um, Marianne would carry Iago and yeah, yeah. he would appear and I would hide my eyes and go, Coo -coo! and he would start yeah. laughing. He would start laughing. Yeah. So I had this idea. Yeah. What if you and I do this? Yeah, you start the cuckoo. Start back. talking, yeah. and and I run out from yeah. somewhere and go coo -coo -coo, and just yeah. you know interrupt you. Yeah. You know, let's play with that. Yeah, so I that, remember. Yeah. So that's what we did, and I thought, okay, I don't know if this is going to work, but this is all I can think of to do. So Pat comes out to announce the act, Madame and Monsieur, je présente, and I stick my head through the curtain and I go, Hoo -hoo! and I thought, okay, maybe they'll laugh. Well, there was a moment of dead silence and then the tent roared. Mm. They all roared and I went, oh, and I disappeared. And then he did it again and I ran around to the side and I opened it the side and I said it even longer. And <clears throat> this repeated, and every time I did, the audience was hysterical. And Pat was looking a little odd, and I couldn't figure it out. But <laughs> it worked so well. Everybody was laughing their heads off, laughing their heads off. And I was like, wow, that went really well. And afterwards, Pat came through, and I said, Pat, that was great. That really worked. And he said, yes. And I said, why did it work so well? And he said, well, um, you know, you weren't saying cuckoo um, like in America. And I said, I wasn't. He said, no, you were saying that um, you had cuckolded me. <laughs> <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I like that. That's a good claim. <laughs> it worked. You know, you know, Congratulations on having such a ridiculous experience. That is like an accomplishment. <laughs> but you have to understand, my clown was wearing um, a giant dress. You know, I was like a girl clown. It was yeah. Yeah. yeah it that was works even better. Yeah. That's hilarious. And you know, you know what, Karen? When you leave France after our tour yes. I, with Company Foreign under the tent, uh, in my house, I come back after the tour too, in my house where you have been during this summer. Yeah. Uh, some days after you leaving, I open drawer on my furniture and uh, in different drawers or or under uh, on the chair or on the table or under something, I find a small paper, you write cuckoo. <laughs> and there is some in my house everywhere. 
I put them as many places as I could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like the inside <laughs> joke that keeps on giving. Um, so we're we're going to we're going to close soon. But I I have a question for you, Jeff. Is that Pat is saying to you that you have the ability to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. You have the ability to be ever present and invisible. And I'm wondering if you can speak to how it is that you do that. Oula. J'ai pas tout compris, Pat. Tu peux he, says, he says, hola. Elle a demandé uh, uh, comment tu fais pour être à la fois présent et, et invisible. Ah, ben, tu parles. <rire> en fait, et tu, 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 tu explique lui que, en fait, moi, je, je vois les scènes se produire. C'est-à-dire que j'anticipe. J'anticipe. Ah, ah. Parce que je, je vois, en fait, ce qui se passe. Okay. Euh, et, et, et je sais à l'avance, enfin, pas à l'avance, mais j'imagine ah, oui. ce qui va se passer, en fait. You know, um... Jeff says, and he's right, I'm sure he's right. He, we know each other very well. He knows what I'm doing. And he knows so well that he can, in advance, he knows before I do the act, he knows. <clears throat> he, he, he knows before I do it. I anticipate. So he is at a good place before I do the act because he knows very well how I work and the anticipate can, it can be in advance of my, my acting. That's why he's a good I, I saw, I, I saw, for example, in Krakow, I saw a, a priest and I, I know Pat go to the priest to do uh, oh. something or, uh, or a policeman or uh, in a church, in a cemetery or uh, uh, I, I know before. <laughs> yeah, for example, because, you know, for example, if, if we cross uh, uh, on the street, a very beautiful woman is sure that I'm going to see her. <laughs> <laughs> but it's difficult to explain just with three pictures. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it, it's, for me, uh, uh, I am a, uh, a privileged spectator and all the time I laugh and the people uh, are confiance with me. Uh, you, you, you know You get it, go on. Yeah. Because right. he's la Jeff is laughing everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. <laughs> In a normal life, Jeff is laughing. He's yes. always laughing. And then when we work together, he's laughing. So people and the are people and, and the they people like, are not they like him, you know, because he's laughing everywhere. So they are content, you know. And they the, are okay. It's contagious. He's a and, laughing and the, photographer. Yeah. Right. And, and the and the people are not afraid by me, by no. my camera. And yeah. uh, you understand. <laughs> Yes, and and the and the complicity that you have with each other, to the mm -hmm. the um the, the energetic knowing that you build up after years and hours. If you go out for six hours at a time, it's like you you end up sharing a brain and sharing a body and sharing time and sharing energy. Yeah. It's like it looks like there's one of you, but there's two of you all the time, and you move in tandem. And it's yeah. it's the same thing in the air, and it's the same thing in in acrobatics. It's like it's mm. it's people being it's it's people traveling together for a purpose and it's very beautiful yeah. sure you're right uh, i love what you're saying too about being the laughing photographer it is the aim of the humor arts museum to create more uplift more good feeling sometimes break out laughter sometimes just a smile in the heart or a smile in the mind whatever it may be uh, and so before we before we close are there any more questions Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you could finally join us, Pat. That's yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so glad too. It's my first. It's my first international experience. performance uh, on video, and you know, <laughs> uh, well, I was not. Uh, I'm. I'm not very, very, uh, you know, up to that, maybe. 
It's okay. Well, and, and Pat, you had the most phenomenal entrance because it was actually completely over. And we were saying goodbye. And then at the very last <laughs> second, when it was all hey. over, you appeared and your entrance was just completely spectacular for the clown that's in your soul. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you, yes. thank thank you all so for much. being here. Thank you, Karen, for curating. Bye bye. Thank you for everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you for our artists. Ciao, ciao. May you go bye -bye. for it to A bientôt. A bientôt. See you on the road. See you on the road. Yes. I'm going to stop the, the, stop the okay. recording. Okay. Ciao, ciao. From the Humor Arts Museum. Merci, Pablo.